Hey guys, so in this video, we are going to go over the respiratory systems histology that we need to know for lab. So with the respiratory system, um, I just stole a little open stacks picture that they've got for us of um, the passageway coming down. So we got the trachea coming out the larynx, all down here. We got all this hyaline cartilage rings that we're going to look at in a little bit. And then these guys are going to branch into the bronchioles. The tracheal is going to split at the side of carina. We're going to go into bronchioles. We're going to have um, into the bronchus system, primaries, secondaries, and tertiaries. So like the first branch will be a primary. The branch off of it would be a secondary. And then the branch of the branches, those guys would be tertiary over here. Um, so this slide is a pretty good slide to show us um, the trachea, but I've got some better ones later on too. But this is a really good one that does show us the epi that we will talk about in a little bit. Um, as we saw in that picture before, how the trachea splits um, into the lungs and the bronchus of the lungs, and eventually it's going to go with smaller, 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 right? We start off really big primaries, and eventually we get into these smaller, smaller little bronchioles. So we've got respiratory bronchioles, and that's these bigger holes that are showing up on the slide. Um, on our lung histology slides and um, our respiratory bronchioles are going to feed into the alveolar sacs. Um, so those guys are connected with alveolar ducts right here. So we've got these larger open areas are the alveolar ducts. And we also got blood vessels running through here because we're going to have capillary beds surrounding the alveolar sacs um, where the gas exchange is going to happen at those capillary beds and the alveolar sacs. So here, this is a, a alveolar sac here. Here's one. Here's another one. We've got them all over in this slide here. There's also some more of them here on this slide. So we're going to just zoom in a little bit closer so we can see the epi that lines those alveolar sacs. So they are going to be this stuff, the simple squamous. So here, if we've zoomed in, this, all of this is one of the alveolar sacs, and this is going to be air space. And we talked about anywhere where we have a gap where there's going to be air or blood flow or it's, it's, it's hollow space. It's going to be the lumen. So here's the air coming in, and it is going to go through this simple squamous epi lining the alveolar sacs. So each one of these is going to be a little cell right along here. Here's another one. This guy. And remember, the simple squamous epi was pancake shaped. And they were very, very thin, which makes them excellent for diffusion, excellent for filtration, um, simple squamous epithelial tissue. So that is going to be at the very, very end. So the air is going to pass all the way through, eventually make it, you know, through those bronchial branches, uh, bronchus branches to the bronchioles, down into the alveolar sacs, and eventually it will make it here. And this is where gas exchange happens through all of these very, very thin um, simple squamous epithelia. And they're going to be surrounded by a capillary bed on the outside because these things actually look like little grape sacs put together. And we have sliced through the grape sacs. And so you can see these very, very thin cells here. But around the bag, around those little individual grape sacs are going to be capillary beds that exchange the gases through these little very, very thin epithelial cells. So that's at the very end of the lungs where we are exchanging gases at the capillary beds with our alveolar sacs that are lined with simple squamous epithelia. At the trachea, up here as we head down to the lungs at the trachea we have this beautiful slide and so i love this one um because you can see the whole thing so here's our lumen where the air is coming down um from the larynx from our mouth um down through the larynx and into the trachea so here's the airflow going through here and um, we need to know the layers. Um, in lecture, we're going to need to know the layers. So we need to know mucosal layer, and that is going to be our epithelium. So here's our pseudostratified epithelium that is going to line. And so if you can make out all this dark, wiggly stuff, that's going to be your epithelial lining. Underneath that, we've got some tracheal glands. And then um, when we take a breath, we are changing the pressure inside of our lungs. Um, and we're going to decrease the pressure every time we take an inhale when the air comes in. And when we do that, when we change the pressure um, to take a breath, we need to be able to make sure those respiratory passages stay open. So they are going to be lined with tracheal um, cartilaginous rings. And so that's what this guy is. All of this stuff is the tracheal rings. These guys are made out of hyaline cartilage right here, and they give support 
to the trachea. So every time we take a deep breath, um, those respiratory patches aren't going to flatten out and smoosh together. We need them to stay open. So that's the um, cartilaginous piece. And then on the outside, all of this stuff on the outside is adventitia. And this is our connective tissue that holds the trachea in place. So we got adventitia here. If we zoom in on it, um, starting from the outside and going in, here's our adventitia. So that was this, again, connective tissue on the outside that holds the trachea in place. And then if we zoom in a little bit on those cartilaginous rings, all of this stuff right here, and we know it's cartilage because of the lacunae. So every single one of these little guys, these are lacunae, all lacuna, lacunae, and then they are going to be filled with the cells that make that substance. So if it's cartilage, they are going to be filled with cells called chondrocytes. And so each one of these little chondrocytes are in here. You can make them out. You can check them out. Look, these little nucleus gives it away that there's a cell inside there. It's a little chondrocyte. And then they are releasing um, the chondroitin, all the substance around it to build up the cartilage. So be able to recognize that we have hyaline cartilage. And that's what this is that gives the support all right here to the trachea. That's the hyaline cartilage. The hyaline cartilage, all cartilage is going to have lacunae and they're going to have the cells living inside of the little lakes called lacunae. The cells that live inside those little lakes are called chondrocytes, releasing the cartilage. Um, and last but not least is that mucosal layer zoomed in on the trachea. So the mucosal layer of the trachea, um, where we talk about the epi um, on the lungs with simple squamous. The epi on the trachea is pseudostratified and it does have cilia, so it's ciliated, and they are definitely columnar shaped, so they are much taller than they are wide um, type of epi. So these guys right here, here's their basilar section, here's their apical section, apical's at the top, basement's at the bottom, right? These guys are very, very tall, but if you look at them, they look like they are stratified and they're not. They, they're kind of like all crossed over each other. So that is why they are called pseudostratified. They are most definitely columnar shaped. And these specifically in the respiratory passages, if you look, you can see all the cilia. All this fuzzy hair-like stuff is the cilia on the respiratory passages of your trachea. And so um, the Respiratory passages are mucosal membranes, and we talked about in AP1, mucosal membranes have these cells called the goblet cells. They look like a goblet, like something you would, you know, hold and drink out of. And so those things are producing mucus. Anytime you have mucous membranes, they have goblet cells producing the mucus. The mucus captures the dust particles in the air when we inhale them, and then the cilia acts like a little conveyor belt and moves it up and out. So be able to recognize the cilia be able to recognize goblet cells and know the type of epi that you will find on the trachea on site. So this guy is columnar shaped and it looks like a stratified, but it's not. It is pseudo stratified. And this specifically is pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epi found in the trachea. So I hope that helps. Have a great day.